Hola, ¿qué tal? Vale. Uy. Recapitulando. Estamos haciendo la misión de facción. Well done. You love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. Uh, dime que te... no puedes enviarle un mensaje sin más. Oh, I've tried. I haven't been able to get through to him at all. Silence from the system's own information broker? Not a good sign. Hiram's peculiar silence leaves us with no other options. You'll have to meet him in person. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Captain, an unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's aether wave frequencies. The Eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for naught but a few bits a night. This fate is set in stone? When he dies young, coughing up black blood, his part in a grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd. Analyzing this subtextual ordering. I believe it was a type of sermon, Captain. Very zealous in origin. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? How can I be of assistance? See you soon, Captain. Whoa. Pasó. Ah, eso pasó. Claro, tenía. Tenía todo abierto. Sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. 
That means it must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-road traffic, us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Well, there's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Okay. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublet. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Did he just say raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait! Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad get a good breeze going and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell anyway mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject kind of goes over my head though mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you if you see him over at headquarters maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you oh and if you're headed that way maybe you could do me a favor I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Boss, come on. Black Hole Birdie, the Hole Meister, the Hack Attack. That's Birdie Holcomb. Only one of the greatest tossball hackers ever. Everyone's heard of him, even on Monarch. We still get some of the games. You've been living in a sulfur pit or something? La verdad es que no, pero llevo décadas en invernación. You're real funny. Guess I don't feel so bad for missing what goes on in the rest of Stellar Bay. Ese poster parece muy valioso. I couldn't really say, I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Claro, preguntaré por él. Thanks a bunch. Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Man, enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace. What I am doing, sir, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. Uh, get that this law's forgotten town, cut off from the rest of the colony. Removed from any culture. I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Days of consumption and culture. When we weren't squabbling with the iconoclasts for lack of better things to do. 
Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? Not that do. Me gusta mucho tu arma. We're not the best equipped, but scouting for rats keeps us on our toes. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Well. New business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Muy generoso por tu parte. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Alcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltoon. Podrían ser las dos. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. ¿Y cuál es exactamente vuestro objetivo? Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. Well, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Vamos, que estás cansado de gorronear y conformarte con las migajas. Gozáis de más libertad que el resto de Acheon. ¿Por qué no aceptáis vuestro destino? Exactly what I would have said if I'd been paying attention. You talk like Graham. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? Not everyone likes the idea of hunting sprats in the back bays, Felix. Your friend makes a good point, young man. I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. ¿Qué piensas hacer al respecto? Well. Mr. Nandi here has a rather <clears throat> ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Ingenious plan? Don't get me wrong, I'm starting to admire your sand, but I bet you could overcomplicate a sisty sandwich. What a charmingly roguish turn of phrase. Allow me to express my thanks at your confidence and assure you that my plan is indeed sufficiently complicated. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit? Then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Vale, ¿y qué piensas hacer? 
¿Cómo lo piensas hacer? With a bold 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you until you said the phrase extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. You'd head south along the road and look for a mountain to the west. Not that I'd advise it. It's a terribly dangerous trek. But if you insist on going, I'd recommend taking a local guide. Nioka would be a prime candidate. If you can keep her sober. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times. Especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. No, they laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Yes, some of us stayed behind and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. Must have pissed off some real big suits to get stuck with that. On the contrary, I wrote lots of very important reports on behalf of top MSI officials before I was able to achieve this position. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't know. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I 
dearly wish it functioned differently.